Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Elric Ferris, your host. Today we're bringing you the full review of the MSI R7870 Hawk Edition video card. Now, right now I currently have the card running the test station here behind me. It's running Fermark, which means basically the card's being stressed out way beyond its normal means. You guys can hear, it's not even running all that loud. When I first started running the test, I don't know what's going on in the card. The card kind of throttled up and it got really loud just for a short period of time. But after a couple system restarts, the card balanced out and I've run the test many, many times and it doesn't get any louder than this no matter what you're doing with it so that said let's jump in let's first look at the features then let's do the benchmarks and then let's talk about at the end of the day where this card is worth your money <laughs> First off, let's take a look at the aesthetics of the card. Take a look at the front. We can see it has a two fan design, has a twin frozer right there on the front of the card telling you that it uses the twin frozer cooling solution. This features two fans, heat pipes and heat fins to help dissipate all the heat away from the GPU. The card size in it is standard about 10 inches. It's a dual slot design like most of the other cards that are out there. Now as far as power, you can first off see there are two six pin power connectors located right here. These are right next to each other and they plug in pretty decently as well. As we take a look at the back of the card, you can see this card has something really kind of trippy on it. Not only does it have a solid back plate on it, but it also has this little thing called the MSI reactor. It also has a little warning on the card that says, don't mess with this or you may break your card. An interesting little thing here. What it actually really does, I'm not sure of, but it looks kind of cool. Now let's take a look at the rear I.O. We can see that the rear I.O. features a standard DVI connector, an HDMI connector, and two May display ports. Some cards come with May display port adapters with them. I didn't see that actually in this box, but it's really not that important. That's basically the aesthetics of the card. Now let's actually talk about the features. The GPU clock on this card is set at 1100 megahertz. The memory clock is set at 1200 megahertz. This card uses two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and has a 256 bit memory interface with a total bandwidth of 153.6 gigabytes a second. The card also has 32 ROPs and also has 1280 unified shaders. And lastly, it's obviously based on the 28 nanometer process. Now those are the basic features of the card. But MSI has a lot of different features that they consider their own. First of all, the military class three components, which basically means that these guys use the highest components they can get their hands on, such as the copper MOS, which is a copper MOSFET, the high C cap, which is highly conductive capacitors, the golden SSC or golden solid state choke, and then the dark solid cap, which is dark solid capacitors. These are all the makeup or the hardware of the car that actually makes the card run very well. They also have their own dust removal technology, which is basically a fan, which helps actually keep dust out of the car by blowing it out and away from the components inside the car. Obviously, this card will run with their Afterburner software. Now, if any of you guys don't know what that is, the Afterburner software is a software that comes with all of the MSI cards, which is actually a really good tool for doing your overclocking and everything else on the card. Hey everybody, before we actually jump into the benchmarks, I got a little secret surprise for you. Now, I know everybody's got already talking about it out there, Max Payne 3, but I've got it on the screen behind me over here, so we're just going to show you some real quick gameplay. Right now, though, let's check out the screen, and you guys can see how we have everything set up on here. I've got DirectX 11, full screen, on. Resolution, 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz. V-Sync, on. Texture quality, very high. High, 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 all the way down. Now this part on the screen right here, you can see below, changes your memory. Now the car we're using right now is a two gigabyte car, but you guys can see if we turn the MSAA up to eight, it actually exceeds the video memory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set it at two. We've got everything else set up. And with that said, we're gonna apply the changes, hop in, and this is the very beginning of the game. So let's take a look at it together. So here we have it, folks. You guys saw the setup screen. Now we're actually gonna jump in and show you Max Payne 3. So I guess I've become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Some rent clown with a gun who puts holes in other bad guys. Well, that's what they had paid for, so in the end, that's what they got. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. Here I was, about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death. And I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. It was time to 
choose. A nasty fall or a bullet to the head. She wasn't calling for more liquor in a cocktail. Whoa, crazy. Well, here we go, folks. Another gambit in the jump mode. I just prefer running right up and shooting him in the head. Slow them down, but not much. Right into this fool's head. Nope. So that's it, folks. I'm not going to bore you guys anymore with this, but I mean, hey, that's a little bit of the gameplay. Max Payne 3, it looks really good. Plays good on the card, but that's about that. Let's actually jump in and see some real benchmarks. Time to rock. Okay, so that about wraps it up. You guys have seen how fast the card is, what the specifications of the card is. Now, the card's coming into market at about $376. For a 7870, it's a little bit pricey, but it does have superior cooling and the superior manufacturing of the card. MSI has a pretty decent warranty. One thing to mention though, Drivers that you do use from AMD do make a difference. I was using an older driver and the car was hitting up to 82 Celsius on the same exact test. As Soon as I changed the drivers up to the latest drivers, temperatures went down 55 Celsius. So the drivers do matter quite a bit on the AMD platform, especially concerning heat. But at the end of the day, the card did run very well. 7870 series is actually one of my favorite series from AMD. The card runs very fast. It's very competitive. This card's not very loud. Still got it running in the background. You guys don't even hear it that much. The only thing I really got about the card is the price. I do feel this card at 376 is a bit pricey, but if you're into MSI products and you like the Hawk and the Lightning series of cards, then you're gonna wanna get the card that you're a fan of. So at the end of the day, I gotta say, this card does win a serious editor's choice here on Tech of Tomorrow for being just, hey, a really good all-around card with a good warranty. We'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow, tomorrow.